Hey guys, so today I thought I'd do a, a part two on uh, what to look for when you're collecting militaria. And like I mentioned in the first video, it's it's mostly pertaining to World War II stuff because that's what I, I collect the majority of. Um, you know, I had a, a couple other items I was going to add in this video, but I got thinking that uh, I actually came up with another video idea on the spot, and so I held off on those items. And so uh, I've got three rifles here today, and I've got a, a random dog tag, uh, and this will be the part of part two of the video. But um, like I said, I'm just trying to give you guys some, some tips on what to look for to, um, to help you pick out and, um, and add you know, more unique or desirable or collectible items to your collection. And, uh, but like I said, it's okay to have a variety and you know, want to collect you know, different things. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But I just want to kind of give you some guys some pointers on what to look for. And so uh, I'm not going to do a lot of talking right now. I'm going to go ahead and bring you in here and let's get started. All right. So as you see, I got the three different rifles here on the table. And like I mentioned, the one dog tag. And like I said, I did have a couple other items I was going to do. But like I said, I came up with another video idea kind of on the spot. I think you guys will enjoy. And so I'm going to hold off on that. But uh, first of all, I was going to show you this this dog tag here, and uh, I want to say, you know, a lot of people are get kind of confused on how to to determine if something's World War II or not as far as dog tags, and really the easiest way to determine it is when you look at it, is uh, you see it's got T42, and then off the side there's a 43. Now that would be their shots, basically the T, you know, their, when they got their tetanus shot, and so I mean if you if you got a dog tag and you see you know, T42 or you know, 43, 44, 45, whatever, then, I mean, that's the date. So you would know you've got a World War II dog tag. Like I said, it's basically your tetanus shot, which this guy got it in 42, and he got a follow-up shot in 1943. And so, I mean, there's your World War II dog tag. Well, now, they did, you know, do this also in the 50s and 60s and stuff, so you might have like a T52 or T58 or T60 or whatever, but... I mean, this is basically your date right there, 42, 1943. Now, you know, with me, I like to look at dates on, look, you know, look for dates on stuff. You know, I'm always looking all over because I like to know when stuff was specifically made. You know, I don't like roundabout. I mean, if I can find the actual year down to the, the T, I guess, I want to know what year a particular item was made. You know, just, I don't know, just adds to the, the, the history of it for me you know but like i said very easy if you got dog tags and you're unsure look at them and there's your date 1942 1943 for example you know where like i said it could be 50s or 60s or whatever but that's just something i do when i when i look at dog tags there are different variations which i'm going to kind of talk about that in another video but anyways i'm gonna get here to the rifles the first one here most of you guys are recognized from the the box magazine there it's an infield and this video, this rifle's been in probably about three other videos, and I did one specifically on this rifle because it's a desirable, and uh, it's it's somewhat rare rifle and uncommon. And uh, this one is it's called a um, a Mark V. It's a trials rifle. They made them from 1922 to 1924. Only made uh, you know somewhere around 20,000 or so of them. And uh, this one's a first year production, 1922. And like I said, I'm not going to get in a lot of the history. I'll, I can put a link in the description if you want to know more about this rifle. But basically, if you see an infield rifle, like what I do, say I'm at a gun show or a gun store and I'm from a distance. I, I, I mean, I can notice an infield, obviously, you know, from the magazine from a distance, right? But what I do is I automatically, because I'm always hoping I'll find another one of these because they're rare and they're, they're, they're hard to find, especially ones that haven't been sporterized. But what I do is I immediately look... For an extra barrel band see this one's just got the one this one's got an extra barrel band here and then another thing is on the the mark uh number one mark threes and mark three stars the site the rear sight was up here whereas it's been moved to the rear you know to the very far back here and it's a whole different setup and then also right here you see you got infield 1922 and then look, you see the V, which is Roman numeral for five, because like I said, it's a Mark V. And so uh, it also had the magazine cut off right here, re added back in, because around 1915, they started kind of 
playing around with parts on rifles and different things and they started taking the magazine cut off away but it was added back on there but um it, so if you see an infield and it looks like this one it's got the extra barrel band for support you know with like uh has helps with like splintering of the wood and gives it extra support basically look for that extra barrel band right there look for the sight that's went from the you know the middle section up here on the top to the rear back back here and then also look for the Roman numeral V for five. And if you've got that, you've got a very desirable rifle, especially if it's all original like mine and, you know, complete. Hasn't been butchered, cut up by Bubba or his cousin or whoever else. So that's just something to look for as far as, you know, the infield rifle. Right here, I've got this, which most of you guys are like, okay, that's a that's a Nagant. It's a Mosin Nagant. What's special about this one is this one is a finished capture. Now, uh, most of you guys have probably heard about the Winter War. And um, it was fought between Russia and Finland. And uh, it started, uh, it was November 30th of 1939, and it lasted until March 13th, 1940. And like I said, it's known as the Winter War. And uh, basically, there's what's called Finnish capture rifles. So obviously, it was the Russians against Finland. So, you know, the Finnish had their rifles they were using. Uh, the Russians had the Nagant rifles, and obviously in war, there's prisoners taken, there's people killed, there's weapons uh, taken from prisoners, you know, who have surrendered, there's rifles and weapons taken off battlefields, off the dead, and this one right here is a Finnish capture, so basically Finnish, you know, Finland soldier, somebody picked this up, either they took it off the battlefield, they took it off of a dead you know, a Russian soldier that was killed, or they got it from a Russian soldier who was surrendering, you know, obviously to be prisoner. And uh, it looks a lot like, you know, a regular Nagant uh, rifle, but this is one easy, quick way to know if you've got a finished capture. Let's check this out. Right there, S-A, which S-A, if I can pronounce it right, it's Swoman Armasia, which is basically Finnish army in, you know, in Finnish, uh, Swoman Armasia. So like I said, if you've got a Nagant and you've got that SA mark right there, then you've got a Finnish capture. And, uh, like I said, they also did, you know, some, a little bit of changes to, you know, like the stock and, and, uh, even the sight and everything, but that's just, just a real quick way of knowing you've got a Finnish capture, you know, a Nagant rifle that, like I said, more than likely would have been taken off. Uh, you know, a soldier or the battlefield during the winter war at the end of 1939 and uh, the beginning part of 1940. This one right here is actually dated, I'll show you, it's dated 1933. And so, like I said, that's that's what, that's what part of the history of this one. Like I said, there are different characteristics and everything, which I'm not going to get into a whole lot of, of breaking down the rifle and all that kind of stuff, but that's just something quick to look for. And uh, lastly, right here, I've got this Type 38 carbine. This is a Japanese Arasaka rifle. It's used the 6.5x50 cartridge. And uh, the reason I got this one here is this one still has the mum for short. It's a 16 petal flower right there on the top of the receiver. And um, it's actually called a chrysanthemum. And it basically is the stamp of the emperor, like, you know, the, the sign that this is, this belongs to the emperor of Japan. This is his property. And obviously, you know, the, Japan surrendered after two atomic bombs. And um, most of these rifles would have been defaced or demummed. Basically, when the surrender was taking place, the Japanese arms were, you know, surrendered to the Allies, the Americans. And um, just as a sign, you know, not to disgrace the emperor or uh, insult him or whatever because it was a dishonor, uh, Americans and, uh, and different soldiers, they would, you know, they would smooth out that, that uh, chrysanthemum. They would grind it, basically deface it. Sometimes they put an X in there, you know, uh, do whatever they can to get rid of that so that, you know, and um, basically as not to dishonor the emperor which obviously his pride was already hurt because they lost but so if i mean if you do have one like i do here like i said mine is fully intact most people would say this would be a veteran pickup so basically you would have had you know an american soldier more than likely in the pacific theater he would have gotten this off of you know a battlefield a dead japanese soldier a surrendering japanese soldier and more than likely, he would have shipped this home during the war. 
because a lot of these guys, if they held on to it at the end of the war before they could ship it home, they would have to, you know, they would have to basically, you know, scratch out the mum, deface it, exit out, or whatever. So more than likely, this particular rifle right here was shipped. You know, it, it could have been gotten off, you know, one of the islands. I mean, it probably was. And shipped home probably soon after is my guess, because I seriously doubt American soldier would carry this around for a long time, because obviously there, there somebody else might have stolen it, could have got lost, misplaced, whatever. But um, that's just something to look for. So if you've got an Arasaka or you're looking at a gun show, gun store, look for that right there. If it's fully intact like mine is, then they do bring a little bit more of a, I guess, a premium, or it definitely adds value, especially if the rifle has not been sporterized or altered. But uh, anyways, I'm going to wrap this video up. Hopefully you guys you know like these kind of videos. I got uh, a lot of likes and everything on the first one I did. So I'm going to try to be more informative in my videos and everything. And I just really appreciate all the support. Um, Y'all just keep watching my videos if you will. Share, uh, subscribe, tell your neighbors, your friends, tell everybody you go to school with. Spread the word about John Boy 09. I'd really appreciate it. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. God bless.